Galatians chapter 3, please. Okay, now this verse is going to be very useful for dispensationalism. At Galatians chapter 3, verse 23. So notice right here it says, but before faith came. So when Jesus died on the cross, that was when faith started operating. But before he died on the cross, we were held under the law. So this is definite proof of dispensational salvations. You might say, what is dispensational salvations? Dispensational salvations teach that there are different salvation plans throughout different dispensations. If you teach that, then it's going to be very useful in debunking different cults who teach salvation by faith and works. If they pull up that passage, it's obviously going to apply to a different dispensation. And not only that, it will make you also not be dishonest in reading the text. It's just literally leaving as it says. A lot of people, they act like they're some kind of Alexandrian metaphorical scholar, and they play with words and try to word a verse that teaches salvation by works, and they're trying to force it into their interpretation of faith. By doing that, it's very dishonest. You're not letting God speak for himself. So you got to leave the word as it says. Okay, so dispensational salvations teaches different salvation plans. If we continue reading right here, before faith came, we were kept what? Under the law. Shut up unto the faith. So notice right here, when we were kept under the law, so this is obvious during the Old Testament, notice it says shut up to the faith. So there is no access. So when people try to give you this access of faith within the time of the law, salvation by faith alone, that is totally false. Now, we obviously... Faith, everyone has faith. There's no doubt about that. Because faith, what does the definition mean? Definition faith is believing. Obviously, everyone, including an atheist, has some form of faith in their lives. So in the Old Testament, they did have faith. So you'll probably see that. But what's very interesting is that faith is only mentioned twice in the Old Testament. Hmm, that's interesting. That's pretty telling. But another thing right here is that the verses... Faith is shut up because of the law. Until law is out of the way, then you can have access to faith. So what it's saying right here is not just an everyday normal faith. This is talking about the context of salvation here. Salvation by faith. So that's what the verse is talking about. So that's what I mean by there was no faith in the Old Testament. It would be referring to salvation right here. So there is no salvation by faith alone in the Old Testament. There is some form of faith and believing that you have to do and then do works, which is why Old Testament salvation is called faith and works. But a solely, fully faith function, faith system, complete faith system, it was not there. So let's keep reading. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. That's proof. Faith is afterwards. So this had to come after faith. So this proves that dispensation, right? Law before, faith after. Different salvations. That's plain as a nose on your face. Let's keep reading. Verse 24, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. So Paul is explaining here that's why the law is schoolmaster. So a schoolmaster is like a teacher, so to speak. So we have right here, the law is being a teacher in what sense? It's showing us, it's teaching us that we are not righteous and holy enough to go to heaven. So that's why I kept arguing to you that to keep using the argument of the Old Testament law against a Jew today. That way you can convince the Jew that his religion, his law, it doesn't make sense that he can save himself through the works of the law. <clears throat> so that's what Paul is pointing out right here, is that the law was our schoolmaster to what? Bring us to Christ. It's supposed to bring you to Christ instead. So what the law does is that law, it cannot, law is not faith, remember. Faith comes after the law is gone. But what the law can do, with a different color pen right here I'm showing to you, is that it can introduce you, it can lead you to faith. Why? Because... In this black mark right here, we're not saved by the, uh, by the law 
with faith right here today. That's not how it works. Faith had to come after the law. But what we could use the law today for is that we can show you why this thing can't save you and this thing, faith, can save you. Amen. See, that's what we can use the law for. It's the schoolmaster to teach that. So that's the blue pen right here. The blue pen, it can make you basically ignore this guy. That's the idea. So it's making you ignore this guy and bringing you to here. Mm -hmm. So use that argument to a Jew that we might be justified by what? Faith. So that now we can be justified by faith. So during the Old Testament, remember, they had to live according to the law for their salvation. No, it's by faith, Pastor. No, because faith was not yet revealed yet, okay? Now that faith is revealed, right, verse 23, mm -hmm. now we can argue, verse 24, this guy doesn't save you. Now we can argue that. Why? It's very simple. Because whose righteousness looks better? Whose salvation looks more complete? Is the faith in Jesus Christ who's holy and pure, taking all your sins, giving you his righteousness? Or is it your own works and deeds by following the law, which you broke many times? See that? So that's why we can now use this to introduce to faith and why we no longer go by this for salvation. And remember, I taught you uh, last lesson, so I'm not going to repeat it again in here, is that, but there was no faith during the Old Testament time of the law. So they had no choice but this for their salvation. So this guy could not give you, remember, complete full eternal life, complete full salvation. But they had no faith that time. It wasn't available. So God had to temporarily give that and put them at a temporary location, not at heaven. They had to go to Abraham's bosom. Until when? Until this guy came. And when this guy came, then God said, now we're going by this system. Okay, now let's keep reading right here. Verse 25, but after that faith is come, See, once faith has come, what happens? We are no longer under a schoolmaster. So we're no longer under the law. So this is proof of dispensational salvation again. Amen. Because, oh no, they were saved by faith like we were back in the Old Testament. No, the verse says that after faith is revealed, then the law no longer. See that? So in other words, there was a change in the dispensation. In other words, there was something going on with their salvation before. Some of them might argue, well, this has nothing to do with salvation. Are you kidding me? Of course the whole context is salvation. Look at verse 22. The whole, uh, look at verse 23. Look at verse 12. Everything had to do with salvation. And then you're going to switch all of a sudden at this verse? That's being dishonest. The whole context has to do with salvation by faith or salvation by the law. That was the whole issue, and you heard me throughout my past Galatians series. We were all talking about what? Salvation by faith versus salvation by works, right? So that was so obvious in the story of Galatians. Okay, uh, let's look at verse 25 uh, again. This is used as a license to sin, but after that faith is come, so now that we're saved by faith, we are no longer a, under a schoolmaster, so we don't go by the law anymore. So I can smoke, drink, and dance, cuss, and do whatever I want. That's what sinners will say. No, that's not true. You're bound under another law right here. So you're not under the law of the flesh, the law of Moses. You're actually under the law of the Spirit. So remember, when you get saved by faith, what happens? The Holy Spirit enters inside you, right? So when the Holy Spirit enters inside you, you have to yield to the Holy Spirit telling you what to do. Yes. You have to follow His rules, His law. So now we're bound to a different law. It's called the law of the Spirit. Because jump to Galatians chapter 5. Jump to Galatians chapter 5. Notice what uh, Paul says right here. Paul, he is against, verse 4, the law of Moses, right? Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. So remember, he's preaching against the Old Testament law for salvation. But he's not using that as an occasion for the flesh. Look at verse 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the what? Flesh. flesh. See, so Paul's saying, no, you're not going to... Uh, be led of the flesh. Now look at verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, 
See that? You're following what the Holy Spirit says. Ye are what? Not under the law. See, so you're still not under the Old Testament law. So just because you're following, just because you're saved by faith doesn't mean that, oh, I can do whatever I want and not follow the Old Testament law. No. When you're saved by faith, you will be led by the Holy Spirit telling you what to do. And when the Holy Spirit tells you what to do, what? You don't have to follow this guy, the Old Testament law. That's what God meant, that you're not, you're not bound to the Old Testament law. What God meant by that is it's because you're having a different person now. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit, His law, that's guiding you. Paul said the law of the Spirit several times throughout his epistles, which I would recommend for you to read through the book of Galatians and his other Pauline epistles. But Paul mentioned several times about the law of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit. Because why? We're under this law, not under this law. So when Seventh-day Adventists keep saying, well, you know, the verse says that the, uh, we still follow the law even though after we get saved by faith. So I don't know why you're against the Old Testament law. Here's something you got to understand right here. We're against the Old Testament law right here because we're talking about the law of the Holy Spirit. Now, here's something you got to understand. In the Old Testament law, there are rules and commandments, obviously, that we don't ignore. For example, thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But here's the thing. If you, go com if you go by the law of the Holy Spirit, those things in the Old Testament law, obviously you can tell will apply to you. See, that's the idea. So when we're saying that the Old Testament law has no application for you, we literally mean that because the Holy Spirit replaces it. But when the Holy Spirit replaces the Old Testament law completely, the Holy Spirit will show you things in the Old Testament and the New Testament or any verse in the Bible that you know yourself that, uh-huh, yeah, I need to get this right with God. I know I'm in the wrong. See, that's the idea right here. 